Hello, this is Terry Gray from Palomar College Academic Technology, and I thought today we might take a look at a great new tool from Google Labs called Google Body. You can get to Google Body from the address you see in my address bar here, bodybrowser.googlelabs.com. But let me say at the outset that you need a browser that supports HTML5 and WebGL in order to interact with this tool or even to see it. Now there's only two of those that you can get right now and they're both in beta. One is Chrome version 9 beta and one is Firefox version 4 beta. So my suggestion is whichever of these you use as your standard browser, uh, Chrome or Firefox, get the beta version of the other one and install it so you can use this tool. What is the tool? Well, you remember all of those anatomical drawings you have on the walls of your classroom and that have been there since the 19th century? <laughs> you no longer need them. Go ahead and rip them up and throw them away because you can now use this tool for your students to explore human anatomy. It's not quite that good yet, but I'm sure it will get there if Google gets behind it and supports it. It works on the same principle as Google Earth and what Google Earth has done for maps of the Earth. They've uh, made classroom maps obsolete. This will eventually do for human anatomy classes. As you can see on your screen, there's a human homunculus, a female homunculus, and to get started, let's talk about the navigation controls in this program. They're over on the left of the screen, and the first thing you notice at the top, there's a Google Earth-like navigation control. If I use the up arrow, it uh, brings her down and tilts her to a 90 degree angle when she reaches her maximum down uh, point. I can do the same by moving her up using the down arrow and tilting her 90 degrees. The diamond in the center of this control will bring her back to anterior view uh, it with her in her integumentary system, if you will, with her skin and, in fact, fully clothed view. My first question is, if we are teaching anatomy, why is she fully clothed? Well, to me, this is fully clothed. <laughs> She's got the sports bra, the spandex pants. <laughs> Come on, get lose the clothes so we can study the anatomy, for crying out loud. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, the arrows, the side arrows, will spin our model. The other arrow will spin her the other way. You can get her looking like an ice skater at the Olympics. The center diamond will bring her back to anterior view. Okay, that's the up, down, back and forth view and the return to anterior view. There is a zoom out tool. That's as small as she gets. There is a zoom in tool and we can zoom in very far, very much like Google Earth. And to return to normal view, the diamond is what you do. All right. Now you'll notice these icons. Uh, as I said, she's, uh, we are viewing her in her integumentary view, her skin and so forth, the exterior view. But I can peel back that exterior layer, remove the skin and nails and so forth, and see the musculature. There's her muscular systems. And by the way, you can just move your cursor over and move her around, or tilt her, or so forth. So you can just drag and, and move also. Uh, if we peel back the muscular layer, we can see the skeletal layer. Uh, notice, however, that the icons that are lit up under the skeletal layer are still apparent. The organs, the circulatory system, and the nervous system. Let's peel back the skeletal system and get a good look at the organs, although we can still see the circulatory system and the nervous system below that. Down to the circulatory system and then down to the nervous system. Okay, and if we want, we can drag the brain down, move it around a little bit, zoom in to take a good look, tilt it forward and around, and so on. Okay, now I'm going back to normal view, and when you click this little diamond to get back to normal view, it takes you back to the external view of the model. I'm going to call her a model instead of a, a homunculus. <laughs> Okay, now one question I have uh, with these icons and these layers is what happened to the lymphatic system? <laughs> I don't see it anywhere here. 
And I really would like a way to see uh, subsystems, uh, respiratory system, endocrine system, reproductive system. So those are all improvements I would suggest to this uh, program so far. But uh, let me talk a little bit more about the navigation because at the lower part of this uh, little control panel over here you have a horizontal view of these systems as well. Let's call this one the vertical view and this one the horizontal view. And you'll notice the sliders here can be slid back to the left to get rid of the integumentary, the muscular, the skeletal, and so on. So we can slide them all here back to the left and just look at the skeletal system if we want. Okay, there's Mr. Bones, or Ms. Bones in this case. <laughs> Smile, please. <laughs> um, in the time-honored tradition of uh, anatomical jokes and add the circulatory system. This is very powerful actually and I can zoom in on any part that I wish just by putting it in the center of my screen and maybe taking a posterior view uh, and so forth. So you can see uh, the amount of control that I have is very great here. All right, uh, I'm going to go back to the vertical view and go back to my default and slide down to the organ view because if I wish to view uh, let's say the stomach I can double click it here and I'll see a label for stomach and everything else will be dimmed out and I can uh, well, there's transparency in the rest of the organ system there but I can spin my object around with that highlighted and then clicking off it somewhere will bring back the, the full view uh, do the same with any part ventricles and so forth. Okay, that's a very powerful feature too. Let me uh, show you, I'm going back to interior normal view, the search feature also. I can click up here and say I want to, and there it is. And I get it in a zoomed in view. And I can turn her body about to see the orientation of the, litter, the liver from all sides and click off to bring back full view and go back to normal view. I can turn labels on. Notice labels are off here. I had a couple labels by default when I searched and those will always come up. But I can turn full labels on. You won't see any from the outside but once we start uh, peeling back layers of the anatomy we can see them all and as we zoom in they'll separate and we can see them fairly clearly. Pretty impressive I think. Click on a certain item discover it is a rib, uh, coastal cartilage, and so on. Okay, that's that has a lot of potential. That's great. The, the one uh, negative I've noticed is when you search in detail for structures in the brain, I'll search for the uh, pituitary gland. Uh, this program, um, I've tried it in both uh, Firefox 4 and Chrome 9, uh, both beta versions, the program persistently over magnifies the object and I have to zoom out a little bit to actually see the pituitary which is right there and then I can see it clearly and you know move around and so forth. I love the way it keeps that thing um, opaque but everything else becomes translucent so I can see the relationship between structures and then just clicking off the object brings back the external view of that system. Okay, so that's the way labels on, label off works and the search system works. Uh, I really like this this program. It has a great deal of potential. It obviously needs development. Google needs to deploy layers like Google Earth layers to make it better, I think. They need a, um, a system of metrics on it too, a ruler that you can overlay and measure distances. And really the most useful thing would be to have some pathology tie-ins to the program so that we could see uh, pathological developments in the various structures too and what they look like. Ideally there would be a layer for x-ray view, MRI view, ultrasound view with a uh, database of objects that would show us different pathologies or different um, developments uh, in these things. We'd also like to see not only male and female models, which would be very important when discussing the reproductive system at least, <laughs> but I'd also like to see age appropriate. Uh, in other words, human developmental uh, uh, models from, uh, from fetus to uh, aged. So we could study osteoporosis effects and 
uh, you know, developmental effects and that sort of thing. So those are all improvements, I believe, that um, Google would get to with this system. It is a wonderful tool, and uh, we just have to thank Google. Anyway, this has been a long video, but it's a great tool. I think it would have immediate application to uh, physiology, anatomy type uh, classrooms uh, at every level. Perhaps it's not detailed enough for college level, but um, perhaps it is. The only drawback now is that you need the special beta browsers to run it, and that implies a computer capable of running those browsers. You have to have robust uh, memory and robust graphics memory. Uh, you know, not exceptional, but robust. Uh, but with that in mind, I highly recommend Google Body. Thanks for listening.